Farsight Studios Pinball Arcade had 100 tables in its peak in 2018. It's now 2020, and they only have 38 tables available for sale. My question is, are they worth it? All right, brief history rundown. Farsight Studios released the Pimba Arcade in late 2013, and over time they would release tables from Bally, Williams, Stern, and Gottlieb, and they would usually release them in double packs with two tables in a pack, uh, but then later on they started releasing these tables individually, but they would consistently have these season packs. There was the season pack number one, two, three, four, all the way through seven. I put up videos ranking all of these table packs. However, in 2018, they announced that they were going to be losing the Bally Williams tables because they were going to no longer have the license. So if you didn't own those tables, you wouldn't be able to buy them by June 30th, 2018. Later, we found out that the reason they lost the Bally Williams tables is because Zen Studios picked up that license instead, and they're currently releasing those tables under Pinball FX3. This was undoubtedly a huge blow to the Pinball Arcade because the Bally Williams tables accounted for over half of the tables in the Pinball Arcade. Not only that, but the season packs were kind of destroyed because a lot of those season packs had Bally Williams tables. So they had to kind of rearrange things in the table packs. So my original intent with this video was that I was going to look at the table packs that were currently available in Pinball Arcade and rank those table packs. However, in looking at it a little bit more closely, I figured that would be very difficult to do because these table packs are just completely different from one another. You've got the Gottlieb tables in their own packs. You've got EM tables in their own packs. You've got the Stern tables in their own packs. And how do you really rank you know, an EM table versus a Stern table. They're two totally different things. I like playing both, and you know, obviously there's more depth and insight into a more modern table than an older EM, but who's to say that that old EM is not good because it doesn't have the complexity of a modern table. Sometimes simpler is better. So, instead what I've opted to do was just go through the tables in each of the packs that are available, look at the price points, and say, hey, you know what? Do I think this table pack is good for the money? Now, as you may or may not know, I really only concentrate on the Steam platform, but I decided to go in and look and see just to make sure that all the table packs were the same in other platforms. I checked out the Android platform, the Switch, the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4. I don't have any Apple products, so I can't check it out on Mac or iOS, but what I found was pretty unusual uh, in regards to the pricing. And as I go through the packs, I'll mention these oddities as I saw them. So I'm gonna go through each of these table packs, talk a little bit, just a tiny bit about each table, and then what I feel about that table pack as a group. So let's get started with uh, Gottlieb pack number one. And the first table uh, is Frank Thomas's Big Hurt. I actually like this table. I think it's probably the best table in the pack. You've got the glove that moves back and forth, which is interesting. You've got the flipper to the side that's like hitting the ball. Uh, just, I like the table. Uh, next table, Gladiators. Again, this is one of those tables that has like an, I like it. It's It's got some weird stuff in it, but uh, overall I do like the table. Uh, Haunted House, I know there's a lot of people that like Haunted House. I'm not personally a big fan of Haunted House at all. Um, honestly, I think it's one of the, my least favorite tables in this group here, but there are people out there that really do like, like Haunted House. Next up we have Victory, and I like this table because it utilizes almost all the shots available on the, the, the field in order to complete the race and make your laps around the table. I, I actually like this one. Genie, it's a wide body table. I'm not particularly too fond of it, but it's fun to play every now and again. Uh, then we have Lights, Camera, Action, which is an unusual table because it makes use of the back box and also has a part of the play field that does um, spin around and alter the play field just a little bit. This one I think is a little bit fun to come back to and play again and again. So, the table pack as a whole, Frank Thomas, Big Hurt, Gladiators, Haunted House, Victory Genie, and Lights, Camera, Action. On all platforms I looked this up on, it was $9.99. Again, US, I'm in the US, I don't know how what this costs in other regions. 
um, and you get six tables. If you break that out, that's about a dollar sixty-seven cents per table. I'd say thumbs up. You've got Frank Thomas's Big Hurt in there, which I really liked. Um, Victory, Lights, Camera, Action, and Gladiators. Um, that and, and those are four tables right there that I like. And if you're paying a dollar sixty-seven each for all the tables, all six of them, I think that's a good deal. All right, Gottlieb Pack Number Two. This has uh, to start out with Wipeout, which I initially didn't really like. I mean, it is a really tight shot table. There's not a lot of room to work in, and primarily because the ski lift takes up a lot of the area, and you've got the downhill slope, which also takes up a lot of area. But just the attitude of the table, I liked it. So I gotta give that one a thumbs up. Rescue 911, maybe my favorite of the, the, the whole pack. Um, the table's crazy. There's constantly things going wrong, and uh, you've got to hit the ball to certain areas. you got the copter that comes along and uh, picks things up. It's just nonstop total chaos, and I love it. Um, then we got Bone Busters, which originally was supposed to be Gottlieb's Ghostbusters, but they didn't get the license to Ghostbusters, so they just kind of uh, reworked it a little bit to make it Bone Busters. I don't really like this table at all. There's really nothing about this table I, I i don't want to say there's nothing about the table i like because it's interesting to come back and play i just don't like any of the shots in the table um black hole was a table that i didn't like at first but the more i played it the more i understood it this is one of my favorite gottlieb tables now just trying to get that multi-ball going on there uh, and then when you do get the multi-ball there's a good chance you're going to have to juggle tape uh, balls on the lower play field and the upper play field Moving on, we got El Dorado City of Gold. Now, this was a table I absolutely hated at the time. I hated this table, but uh, that was back in the PS3 days. As technology got better and I started playing on PS4 and on Steam, I started to like it a bit more. Yeah, and I do like the shots in the table, so I'll give this one eh, maybe a slightly a thumbs up. I don't know. Uh, and then going nuts don't like this table this is a table that was never put in production it's just a constant timed multi-ball so either you keep all the balls in play uh until you lose the time or you just lose all the balls um it's a very difficult table to play i think it's just if you like multi-ball yeah go for it but otherwise I, I don't like going nuts at all so that's got leap pack two we got wipeout rescue 911 bone busters black hole el dorado city of gold going nuts so that's six tables for nine dollars ninety eight cents that's a dollar sixty seven a piece and there's not as many tables in this pack that i like as much as the first pack but still um ten dollars for six tables i don't think is bad uh you're gonna get rescue 911 and black hole which i which i personally like uh wipeout which eh, okay i think that's fine um el dorado city of gold is okay but it's not the best el dorado in pimp arcade um, I'd say thumbs up, sure, after Gottlieb Pack 1, Gottlieb Pack 2 is okay as well. All right, moving on to Gottlieb Pack 3, we got Teed Off. We're going to start with Teed Off. Um, the golf game that I don't know which came out first, No Good Gophers or Teed Off, and they're both uh, golf-themed tables, but I don't really like Teed Off at all. It's got the gopher uh, making weird comments, just like No Good Gophers, but I don't think the humor is pulled off as good as No Good Gophers at all. And the funny thing is, I played this table more in real life than I have No Good Gophers, and even then, I would play it just because it's there. I... I, I really can't recommend the table i'm just not a big fan of it um, then we got cue ball wizard uh I, I give this one a thumbs up it's really interesting with the with the giant regular size cue ball on the table that interacts with the pinball and hitting the eight ball into certain uh spots on the upper play field um but a lot of this table is just hitting the ramp again and again and again there's not a whole big large variety of shots it's 90% of the time hitting that ramp for things to happen. Uh, but still, it's interesting. Uh, class of 1812 is a table. I, <laughs> I I don't like the table, but I keep coming back to it because I find it interesting. And I do find get some humor and enjoyment out of it. So uh, despite my, me not really liking the table that much, I do think it's interesting. Uh, and then we got Cactus Jacks. I really like this table. This might be my favorite table in the whole bundle. 
You've got the weird, uh, weird dialogue of the the cactuses, which are the band in this bar. You wind up throwing fruit at them. It's it's a whole thing. <laughs> I, I like the table. And then uh, finally, this uh, we got TX Sector. Again, this is a really cool table with really cool sound effects. And the whole gimmick of the table is like it's making it seem like your ball is teleporting back and forth between two spots on the table. Uh, I would give this one a thumbs up. So that's got Lee Pack 3. We got Teed Off, Cue Ball Wizard, Class of 1812, Cactus Jax, and TX Sector. We only get five tables this time instead of six. And the price across all platforms that I looked up was $8.99 for five tables. That breaks out to $1.80 per table. Again, it's not that expensive, but again, there's less tables in here that I'm interested in than the other two Gottlieb packs. So if I were ranking these right now, it's just one, two, three. So, you know, I, I, I guess I could recommend this Gottlieb pack three, because again, $1.80 per table isn't that much. All right, next up, we have the Gottlieb EM pack, the Electromechanical pack. And we're going to start out with Big Shot. I really like Big Shot. This might be my favorite table in the uh, this whole pack here. I just like I just like the whole layout, the way you're hitting the, the, the balls on the side of the table. That's just what you're going for. Big thumbs up on Big Shot. And we got Centigrade 37. There's a whole gimmick here with raising the temperature and i honestly have not played this a whole lot but i do like centigrade 37 i do i would give that one a thumbs up uh central park this one's been around for quite some time even going back as far as the pinball hall of fame gotley collection on uh, like the ps2 even i don't think it was available before that you know it might be available in that microsoft pinball arcade now that i think about it i don't know i keep forgetting about that but eh, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I like playing it. It is a fun oddity, but I don't know if I would recommend it for everyone. Uh, El Dorado. Now, this is the better version of El Dorado City of Gold. It's just, it's brighter. It has better sound effects. It, maybe it's just because it's simpler. Um, and, and the City of Gold one I found a little bit annoying, but I would wholeheartedly recommend El Dorado. And then we got Jack's Open the game or where you trying to match up the cards to advance and i i like this one as well honestly i would say um okay here we go uh got lee bm tech got big shot centigrade 37 central park el dorado jacks open you're getting five tables again it's the same price as got lee pack three which is um 8.99 again that breaks out to dollar 80 per table it all breaks down to whether or not you like EM tables or not. I personally like EM tables. I really like this table pack. But if you don't like these simplest, more simpler tables, pass on it. All right, next table pack is the Elvin G and Company pack. This only has two tables in it. Uh, first one being L's Garage Band goes on a world tour. And this one I, I thought was kind of fun. It's, o it's okay. Um, the whole thing is that you've got a band you're growing around and doing gigs around the world. Really, it, it's got the spinner in it, but there's really nothing that really jumps out at me and says this is a must have. Um, it is an interesting oddity. There's not a whole lot of these tables that exist out there in real life, and that may be the reason you might want to play it. Um, but the second table, uh, Pistol Poker, I like this one a lot better. It's more interesting. Um, it's more of a cowboy gunslinging theme. You got an upper play field. I don't know what it is about it. I can just recommend it a little bit more. I would give it a thumbs up. You got the weird card game in the background. All right, so again, that's Elvin G and Company Pack. Elvin's Garage Band goes on a world tour and pistol poker. Two tables only. And they're charging $7.99, which is very odd i think and this is across all platforms for two tables whereas like five tables you were they were charging 8.99 and six tables they were charging 9.99 so why is it only a dollar left less because that puts the price at almost four dollars a table and honestly i can't recommend this pack unless it goes on sale because of that because four dollars for each of these tables is a bit excessive i think especially when they're they're breaking down the other ones to about $1.80 or $1.60 uh, each. So this just seems like th this price should be lower. Maybe $5 to $2.50 at the very high at the very high end. I think this table pack should be about $5. All right, the next table pack is kind of an oddity because there's only one table in this table pack. That is Doctor Who Master of Time table pack. 
which only includes Doctor Who, Master of Time. Now, interesting thing about the way this table came about is back when they actually had the Williams and Bally licenses, they would oftentimes go to Kickstarter to help fund the licensing for a lot of tables. One of the tables they did that for was Doctor Who. So in the Kickstarter, one of the things they promised was, oh, we'll bring out the Doctor Who table, but you'll, we'll also make our own table based on Doctor Who, based on the newer series. And this Master of Time is the result of that. They had to get rid of the original Doctor Who table because that was a Bally table, but this was their own. And what they basically did was take the layout of the Doctor Who table, they added flippers, they got rid of a bunch of stuff, and what you see is the result. And quite frankly, I don't like this table at all. They got rid of all the fun stuff of the Doctor Who table and replaced it with just, just, I don't know, just sound bites of the show that just... I mean, if you were just listening to this table, it would just sound like a uh, like an advertisement for Doctor Who. With just sound bites constantly playing here and there and there and there. And they got rid of the time expander, which I felt was a really fun part of the table. And they replaced it with just the TARDIS sitting there and just, you know, CG elements popping up. This is a table that couldn't exist in real life. And um, I just don't like this table at all. So, yeah, here we have it. Doctor Who, Master of Time Pinball. Now this is where we first start to see some of this pricing oddity stuff because on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, and Android, this table is $9.99, which is a kind of ridiculous pricing for this table. It should be far less than that. It's not even a real table. But here's the oddity. This, on the Switch when I looked it up, and there was no indications that this was on sale at all. It was $3.49. So I don't understand why the Switch version was so ch much cheaper, unless it was on sale and I just didn't know it was on sale. But even if it was a 50% on sale, it would be five bucks. So I don't understand why this table costs so much on, uh, on most of the consoles, but somehow on Switch, it's like $3.49. Even $3.49, I feel, is a little bit too much for this table. I think it should cost two dollars at most i don't like this table at all. i would not recommend it at all all right now we're going to move on to the stern at table pack one now this is where things get interesting because we're going to start out with frankenstein this is a, a sega's frankenstein sega kind of rolled up into stern so that's why it's in the stern table pack it's got the bigger dmv uh, this table i i have i like it i don't like it i'm kind of in between what i really don't like about it is that there's a lot of sound bites that get repeated throughout the table again and again and again and again if it weren't for that i think i would wholeheartedly recommend it but <laughs> because of those sound bites i think i would half-heartedly recommend it it's an okay table it's got um, when things start getting to go on the table, it really gets you pumped up for it, especially when you get like six ball, multi ball and stuff. Uh, next table we got is Flight 2000, a bit of an older table in this table pack. I would actually recommend this one. This is a pretty interesting one where you're trying to, the whole gimmick is trying to lock the balls and then they kind of launch off in sequence. You have to hit the, like the targets in order. And, and that's the kind of thing I like in pinball. It's like, oh, you have to hit these in order, otherwise it doesn't work um, kind of deal. So I like Flight 2000, even though it is a white body and I'm not a big fan of white bodies, but I would kind of recommend it. We got Ripley's Believe It or Not. This was a table that was available early on in the pinball arcade. And I liked playing it. This one took me by surprise. I'd never played it in real life. I started playing it in the pinball arcade. And I liked it. I, I didn't think I'd like it because of the theme for whatever reason and the fact that it's an early 2000 Stern table. Um, but I like this one, so I would give it a thumbs up. And we got Starship Troopers. This was another Sega table that was kind of rolled up into Stern. Uh, this one just seems really bland to me. I'm not a big fan of this one. And then you've got that extra flipper off to the side where you need an extra flipper button. And I just, I don't know, I, don't, I just don't like this table that much. Some people might, I, but they, they have this table at Galloping Ghost Arcade, and for some reason I've never gone to play it. I, I, I should try it again in real life. I, I've played it in real life, I've played it in Pimmer Arcade, I'm just not a big fan of this table, but who knows, maybe one day I might be. Maybe there's a big fan out there, I, but me, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> and then we got the Star Trek Vengeance Premium. This I would wholeheartedly recommend. This 
is my uh, favorite table in real life. Actually, I own a Star Trek Pro. I don't know if I would like the Pro or the Premium uh, better, but I own the Pro. It, I don't know if I own it, if that's one of the reasons why it's my favorite table. But And, of course, in the Pinball Arcade, it's a lot easier to play. I can get a lot further in it than I can in real life. But, um, yeah, I would wholeheartedly recommend Star Trek Vengeance Premium. And then we've got in Stern Pack 1 ACDC with a big asterisk because Ace, they uh, lost the license for ACDC and uh, it, it was removed from sale. So if you didn't buy this pack before then, you cannot get ACDC. So there's really no point in talking about it. I hesitate to even put it on this list because you can't buy it anymore. In fact, I'm not going to talk about it. So it's off. It's off the tables. So, Star Pack 1 has five tables in it. Frankenstein, Flight 2000, Ripley's Believe It or Not, Starship Troopers, and Star Trek Vengeance Premium. And this is where we get a lot of pricing oddities because on PS4 and Android, it's $9.99. Whereas on Steam and Xbox One, it was $4.99. And again, there's no indication of whether or not these are their sales or not. I don't think they're on sales because at least on Steam, when I look it up, there's no X off and saying, oh, it was originally $9.99 and now it's $4.99. It just seems to be the permanent price. So why is the permanent price cheaper on Steam and Xbox One than it is on PS4 and Android? Not only that, okay, this is a, a, a really interesting oddity. Uh, now, I don't know if this is the case on Steam, but I know on the PS4, Xbox One, and Android, you could buy the Star Trek Vengeance Premium table separately. The very weird thing about this is that the price of the table for itself is the same price as the whole table pack. So on PS4 and Android, buying Star Trek alone would cost you $9.99, but to buy the whole pack is $9.99. It doesn't make any sense at all. And on Xbox One, it's $4.99 uh, to buy Star Trek Vengeance Premium, but the whole table pack is $4.99. Really makes no sense at all. But, um... Five tables for $10, $2 the table, or on Steam and Xbox One, um, five tables for $5 at the dollar a piece. I think it's a good price either way you look at it. I, it's a no-brainer for me on Steam or Xbox One at $4.99. Um, no-brainer at all, but it is still a recommendation at $10 for the whole table pack, even though you're missing out on ACDC. Now, you may have noticed I didn't mention the Switch at all, and that's because this table pack isn't available at all on Switch. Now, what's interesting is if you go into the Pinball Arcade, it's still listed as a table pack, but when you go to click on it to buy it, it takes you to all the DLC that's available for the game, and it's just not there. What I think happened was that it was on Switch, Stern Table Pack 1, it included ACDC in that table pack, and when they lost ACDC, normally what they should have done was remove that and then add in a new stern uh, pack number one but they removed it but there's no stern pack one to take its place so i wonder if they had some sort of issue with that i don't know none of these tables in table pack one is available in switch right now it may change in the future but who knows how long this has been all right moving on stern table pack two we get six tables here starting with high roller casino uh this is Eh, this is to me an eh table because there's a lot of times where it slows down, especially when you launch a ball and you have to wait for the ball to go around the roulette wheel. But it is an interesting gambling theme table. Probably not the best, but it's interesting. Uh, moving on, we got Last Action Hero. I would recommend this one wholeheartedly. I love this table uh, with all the quips and stuff from the movie. Um, yeah, this is just a nonsense good time with uh, Last Action Hero. And we got Harley Davidson 3rd Edition, uh, one of the earlier tables that was available in the Pimba Arcade. So, yeah, it's, it's again, like High Roller Casino, for me it's like an eh table, it really doesn't strike me, but it's, I couldn't say it's bad. Then we got Phantom of the Opera, which was a, originally a Data East table. In fact, I think it was the first Data East table that was put into the Pimba Arcade. And um, I'd say this is a fun table. Um, I got nothing against the table at all. In fact, I would put it higher than anything else that I've uh, talked about in this table pack. But that's about to change because the next table in Stern Pack 2 is Mustang Premium. 
I really like this table. I, I do like it. The, the, the music in it's great. It's guaranteed to get you a copyright strike if you play it on YouTube. Uh, so don't play it on YouTube. But unless you don't care about the copyright strike. But the music's great. Um, it's a fun table. Maybe not in real life. Maybe people pass over this in real life for other tables. But as a digital pinball re recreation of it, I got to give it a thumbs up. I like this table. And then finally... Ghostbusters Premium. This is probably the best table in the entire table pack. I know a lot of people probably had problems with this. The table looks okay. Um, nothing bad about it at all. I like the table. Um, I like playing it in real life. This is probably the newest uh, table that's currently available in Pimba Arcade. And if you like Ghostbusters, I think you're going to have a ball with this table. And really the more i play it the more i find out about it and i just i just like this table i really do it's one of the tables i would might want to have in real life so that's stern pack two with high roller casino lax action hero harley davidson third edition fan of the opera mustang premium and ghostbusters premium again this is another table pack with a bunch of oddities because on steam and on xbox one this table pack is ten dollars for six tables at $1.67 per table. But on Switch, PS4, and Android, this table pack will run you $19.99, running you $3.33 per table. Honestly, $3.33 per table isn't that bad, but when you compare it to the fact that you could get it on other platforms for $10 and you only pay $1.67 per table, I, I wouldn't pay $20. I, I'd say wait for a sale because they do go on sale from time to time. I don't know about uh, other platforms or whatnot. It seems like they still go on sale, but I just don't understand why there's a price discrepancy. And again, on Steam and Xbox One, there's no indication at all that these are on sale. That's just the normal price. But again, we have some other little oddities because on um, these platforms, you can buy Mustang uh, Premium and Ghostbusters Premium separately. And again, we're going to see a little bit of oddities here because on the PS4, the Mustang Premium, you could buy for $9.99. Whereas on Xbox One, Mustang Premium by itself is $4.99. As well as on Android, it's $4.99. So a whole bunch of weird oddities there with the table packs costing different prices, but then the individual table itself costing different prices. And it's not even really tied to how much the table packs cost. And then also Ghostbusters Premium, on Android, $10, $9.90. On Xbox One, $9.90. And on PS4, it seems like it should be available for sale. If you go into the game and you select Ghostbusters Premium and then go to the store, that table pack is not available for sale. So it seems like they've kind of missed um, having that for sale individually for some reason on PlayStation 4, even though the option is there in the game for it. What are they doing? I don't know. Um... <laughs> Uh, finally, let's talk about Stern Pack 3, which only has two tables. And this is these two tables are interesting because they were released after Season 7. But then after they released these two tables, they lost all the Williams Valley tables. And then they never released another table again. So they haven't released another table since uh, these two tables were released. And I think that's like halfway through 2018. So for sure, a year and a half without any new tables in... Um, Pimba Arcade, but Stern Pack 3, Big Buck Hunter, which, um, it's a fun table. It, I don't really know anything about the Big Buck Hunter video games, uh, the arcade machines or whatever, but this table does not take itself seriously at all. You've got, um, <laughs> you've got the aliens with the pop bumpers, you've got the guy shooting cow pies, and I like how when the deer runs out on the table, you have to hit him with the ball, it's the same as hitting him. This table I think is fine. And then the second table in the pack, uh, Whoa Nelly, Big Juicy Melons. And it's um, it's a, it's like an EM table, but it's a newer version of an EM table. Um, it's definitely style of state, but it's made to look like an EM table. I've played it in real life. It's fun in real life. It's just very simple, but with added dialogue on top of it. I liked it. Um, I, would, I would recommend it, but... When we look at the entirety of Stern Table Pack 3, which is Big Bot Hunter and Whoa Nelly Big Juicy Melons, the price is astronomical. Uh, on all platforms, 
it is $14.99 for two tables. So we're paying $7.50 per table if you buy the pack. But you can still buy the, the tables individually, I think, on every platform. And they charge $9.99 per table, each of these tables. And despite the fact that these tables have been out for over a year, they've never lowered the price on it. Uh, not only that, but these two tables aren't even available on Switch. Stern Pack 3 doesn't even show up as, as an option for sale on Switch. So, again, I, I don't know if I... You have to really, really, really be interested in these tables to buy it, I think. And just on price alone, I'd say wait for a big sale or something like that. Because it's kind of um, like $10 for one table, I think, is way too much. Especially when you're looking at uh, competitors like uh, Magic Pickle, Zacharia Pinball, and Pinball FX3. You're, if, in Pinball FX3, you're getting um, three, uh, two or three tables for $10. Whereas here, they're asking $10 for one table, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. Especially the Master of Time table. Totally ridiculous. So there we go. We've uh, covered all the tables currently available in the Pinball Arcade, at least for sale. Again, if you bought any of the tables that they removed, they still wind up in your game just as legacy tables but it just seems really interesting that they really haven't done anything with the game in a year and a half there seems to be no new tables coming out they don't even seem to be interested in adding table packs to platforms that are missing table packs or just dlc that just seems to be missing it seems like they're done with the pinball arcade uh, I mean, in the meantime, they've put out a bowling game. Uh, they are, Farsight Studios is still doing a little bit of pinball stuff because the Toy Shock uh, digital pinball table has their tables in it, and that was released fairly recently. And there are new models I know that they're working on as well, probably with the same tables in it. But it just seems like, at I, I, this point, I'd be surprised if anything changes with Pinball Arcade because... People are wondering, hey, are there going to be new tables in the Pinball Arcade? But hey, never mind the new tables. Are they even going to be fixing DLC that seems to be broken in some versions of the game, like the PS4 and the Switch? The Switch is missing Stern Pack 1. Why is it missing? Why is it not there? Why don't they try and fix that? They just might be thinking that it's just not viable for them to put the money into it to fix it if nobody's going to buy it. I really don't know. Another thing that's interesting is that on some of the tables, you could have actually paid a little bit more and got the pro version of the table, and that allowed you to do table exploration, move the camera around, and also go into the operator's menu and mess around with that if you wanted to. But it seems like in these new table packs, you don't get the pro versions at all. I think Big Buck Hunter, you can get the pro version, but somebody during one of my streams went ahead and bought one of the table packs as I was playing them, and they sent me screenshots and they were not getting the pro versions of the tables. I don't know why they would eliminate that as well. Um, right now, Pimba Arcade, uh, yeah, some of the tables are cheap enough to go ahead and buy and play, but do I hold up any hope that it's going to be updated in the future at all? Not really. I, I think it might be done. But who knows, maybe 2020 is the comeback year for the Pinball Arcade and they'll take everybody by surprise and they'll put out a lot more, more recent Stern tables. I, I don't know, unless they lose that license too, who knows. Um, I mean, they, right, as of right now, they got the Gottlieb and Stern licenses. They could do a lot with it, but they're not really doing anything right now. But who knows, maybe they just took 2019 off from doing anything with Pimba Arcade and they're gonna be coming back in full force in 2020 and be pumping out stuff, content for Pimba Arcade uh, this year. I guess if you're a big fan of Pimba Arcade, you can only hope, right? Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. And just like Table Pack 1, it's $9.99 for six tables, $1.67 per table. Shut up, I'm not talking to you.